Hello, T-Bill fans. I hope this week has been treating you well so far. Here's a quick update on the better than expected October inflation numbers released last week that pushed the market sharply higher on signs of cooling inflation. Right after the October CPIU was released, both the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq saw some of its biggest percentage gains in over two and a half years, while Treasuries took a beating, with new issue four-week and eight-week T-bills auctioning off lower for the first time in recent months. Well, that changed pretty quickly when the Federal Reserve Governor Christopher Waller dashed all hopes of a Fed pivot this past weekend. Waller warned that the Fed will continue to hike rates and that the Fed may consider slowing the pace of rate increases at its next meeting, but that should not be seen as a softening in its commitment to lower inflation. He went on to say that markets should stop focusing on the pace of each rate hike, but rather the end point of rate increases, and that that end point is likely to be a ways off, meaning, hey folks, focus on that now famous 2% target inflation rate that Powell so often references. Some of you have asked, why is 2% the magic number? Now, I'm not privy to the inner workings of the Fed, but since 2012, the Fed's policy-setting Federal Open Market Committee's explicit longer-run annual inflation goal has been 2%. And as you can see from this table, 2% per year has been roughly on average where inflation has hovered since that time, until the pandemic hit. One thing to note on this table is this estimated 8.6% number for 2022. This projection from the Minneapolis Fed was based on the CPIU change from the first quarter of 2021 to the first quarter of 2022. So it's likely that it may come down by the end of this year if CPIU sticks to its current trajectory. Now, markets went up last Thursday and Friday because the October inflation report came in better than expected. Then they went down on Monday because Federal Reserve Governor Waller essentially said that the Fed would not pivot yet. And then they went up one day later because the producer price index, PPI, also came in better than anticipated. PPI is a measure of wholesale inflation, meaning the prices paid for goods and services before they reach you and me. Market expectations were for an 8.3% year-over-year increase in October, and actuals came in at 8%. And very quickly, market folks forgot what Waller said just two days earlier. The endpoint is still a ways off. In a nutshell, the market is quite volatile at the moment, and overreaction to each inflation-related report appears to be practically customary these days. Who knows what will happen this Friday when the employment report is released? For our part, and for what it's worth, we're not following market overreaction, but rather the Fed's latest crystal clear statement from Waller, which basically confirmed our T-bill laddering strategy, as I summed up in this recent video on the October inflation report and what it means for T-bills and I-bonds. We'll continue to ladder into 13-week T-bills for now, as the Fed continues to raise rates, albeit at a potentially slower pace. And with every new reinvestment, we'll continue to buy into new, higher yielding, and at some point, potentially longer duration instruments. And as I-bond rates go down due to moderating inflation, we'll also need to reevaluate our I-bond holdings. So here's a pre-holiday toast to OK I-bond rates for now and higher T-bill rates and lower inflation in the not too, too distant future, hopefully. As always, Super Saver, if you enjoyed today's latest inflation update, don't forget that thumbs up and stay tuned for more exciting wealth building videos.